Mr. Speaker, sir, in the last uh, six months since we last met, uh, the state and the nation as a whole have lost prominent leaders. Among them, our late Robert Karshin, who was the former Rajya Sabha member, late J.D. Rambai, the former Chief Minister of Meghalaya, late Simule, the former MLA of Meghalaya, Legislative Assembly, late Albin Stone M. Sangma, a former Minister of Government of Meghalaya, late R.G. Lingdo, former Home Minister of Meghalaya, late uh, Talek Kunil Bashir, a former Lok Sabha member from Kerala, late B.B. Gurung, former Chief Minister of Sikkim, late K. Sankanarayan, senior legislator from Kerala, late Pandit Sukram, former Union Minister from Himachal Pradesh, late Ramesh Latke, an MLA from Andheri, Mumbai, late Tota Singh, a former minister from Punjab, late uh, Shivaji Patnayak, former MP from Odisha, late Prayal, Prayar Gopalakrishna, senior Congress leader and former MLA of Kerala, late Rajesh Gupta, senior BJP leader and former MLA from Jammu and Kashmir, late A.G. Kordji, former MLA of Karnataka, late Babu Rao Pacharne, the former MLA of BJP from Maharashtra, and late Subhash Singh, former minister from Bihar. And sir, out of these great leaders uh, which the nation and the state have lost, five belong to our own state, sir. And uh, each of the individuals who we have lost in this last five years, five, uh, six months, the five uh, individuals that we have lost, the leaders who we have lost from Meghalaya, have been people who have contributed immensely to the state, to the people of the state. And also they've had a relation with all the different members of this house in one way or the other. And um, I don't know if I'll be able to do justice uh, standing here today to be able to pay a fitting tribute to these great souls to these great leaders who we have lost. Late R.G. Lingdo was somebody who was like an elder brother to me, somebody who was a friend to me, somebody who I could always go to and speak to, a person who wasn't scared to speak his mind, wasn't scared to stand up and uh, say what he thought about an issue, even though he knew that uh, I may not agree with it or whoever is in front of him may not agree to it. A person who had nothing to hide, I should say. And uh, that is what made him so great. And I remember many occasions when um, different political situations were unfolding in the state. In the last, in fact, 15 years to 18 years, in different occasions I must have sat with him and discussed so many aspects of the state and overall politics of our state and the nation as a whole. In fact, I'm glad that uh, just a few weeks or days before he passed away, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister and myself had paid a visit to him. And uh, while we sat with him, his sense of humor didn't change. And we could see he was very weak. He was very weak at that point in time. And in spite of the, the weakness that was there in him and the pain maybe he was going through, which of course he didn't allow it to come to his face and show in the expressions in his face, in spite of all of that, he was very happy, you know, very humorous, 
and was still joking with us even till the last point when we left the house. So we truly miss him. He was a great uh, friend, a great leader, and uh, a person who, not just his family members and his close friends, but I think the state as a whole will really miss. Late Robert Kharshing also was a person who was very closely associated with us. He was uh, somebody who had worked very closely with my late father, late P.S. Sangma. And in fact, he was in the NCP at one point in time when we were also in NCP. And uh, it was through the NCP that he had become a Rajya Sabha member at that point in time. And uh, that's the kind of closeness that was there. And again, a person who really uh, shared a lot of closeness with me as well as uh, with the party leaders who we all were together in uh, NCP at that point in time. A person who was very, very highly intellectual and was very aware of a lot of issues relating to the state and the country and the world as a whole. And a person who really spoke well. And a lot of people, in fact, even in Rajya Sabha, whenever I meet the MPs, they tell me that uh, he used to really uh, speak very well and represent the state very well when he was in the Rajya Sabha. Late J.D. Rambai, of course, we all know, again, a person who was very straightforward and a very uh, person who was very simple, I should say. And uh, he never used to hide anything. I remember at one point in time, I have not shared this with a lot of people. And uh, it was a very long time back, maybe, I can't exactly remember, but about 12 to 15 years back. And uh, that time, we were trying to urge him to join our political party, the NCP. And with great difficulty, I managed to convince him that uh, he should come. And then he called me up. He called me up and he said, uh, Conrad, why did you come in to my house? Let's discuss this and I will be happy to join the NCP. And I was very pleased. So I rushed to his house. He was staying in Taraghar, I think, at that point in time. And I went, and just before entering his gate, I thought I should uh, speak to, obviously, the leaders of the party and uh, get a green signal for them before I actually go in and uh, finalize the details. And when I called the party leaders, they told me that it won't be possible to give the ticket to him because we have already, for, we have already promised somebody else. And there I was right at the gate about to enter his house and I didn't know whether I should turn back and go back or whether I should enter his house and speak to him. But of course I thought the, the least I could do is enter his house. And I went inside and I, I apologized to him and I said, I'm so sorry sir that this misunderstanding has happened. And he didn't have any, even a single you know, second of anger in his face, he just smiled. And he said, it's okay, don't worry about it, it's fine. And that's when I saw the quality in that individual at that point in time, the leadership, the way he understood things and uh, the way he managed things. And even at, the set, at that point in time where it was almost like I had lied to him and I could not uh, uh, you know, live up to my words, that he still understood it and he forgave me at that point in time. So I really respected him and appreciated the way he had handled the situation at that point in time. And I really remember all the different moments that I had spent with him. In fact, uh, again, Deputy Chief Minister and myself had visited him maybe weeks or a few months before he passed away. And we had the honor to at least uh, speak to him and share some very, very special moments uh, before he passed away. Late uh, Albin Stone M. Sangma, of course, was a great person who had contributed immensely to the state, even from the point of the statehood struggle that we had. And uh, a person who had contributed for many, many years to the state and uh, to the, especially to the people of Garo Hills. And I remember fondly the moments I spent with him because even at that age of 96, 97, he passed away at this age of uh, 97 on the 16th of June. And uh, in spite of his age, 
I did not see even a single uh, you know, moment where the, the mind, and the sharpness of his mind or the memory that he had was all there. And he used to call me almost every month to discuss with me about any issue that used to come up in the state or in Tura town. And he used to you know, have the authority and tell me that, Conrad, this is what I think. This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. These are the problems that I'm hearing from people. So that is a kind of active uh, you know, life that he had, that even though he was not active in politics, but uh, from a public life point of view, he never disengaged. He always took up the responsibility to take up issues and share it. And as I said, most importantly, even at the age of 97, he would remember different things that used to happen. He would have a very sharp, uh, I should say, opinion on many, many issues. And he would not you know, be scared or worried to tell me that this is what you're doing wrong. You should change this. You should uh, improve these things. And as a father figure, he used to always be there to guide me. And uh, somebody, as I said, also who's been associated, I think, with almost everybody in this house in one way or the other. And I think a person who has seen the entire history of the state till the 50 years celebration we had. So it's a great loss for the state and uh, obviously for the people of uh, Tura and uh, Garo Hills and Meghalaya State because a person of his caliber and his experience was somebody who even till his last breath was contributing towards the overall development and uh, overall issues of the state. Apart from these great four great leaders, we had also lost uh, late Simbule, who was also another very, very senior leader uh, from the state of Meghalaya, and a former MLA, and so many other leaders from different parts of the country. And therefore, on behalf of all the members of the House, I would like to uh, express and uh, convey our deepest condolences to the bereaved families and would pray to God Almighty that he may give all the family members the strength to bear the loss that they have had and uh, pray to Almighty that their souls may rest in eternal peace. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Arise to join the leader of the house in condoling the sad demise of a number of illustrious leaders, both from our own state, whom we have known so closely, and with whom we have been privileged to be associated with for a very long time, and also other leaders from different parts of the country. Mr. Speaker, sir, while <clears throat> condoling the death of these leaders, I would like to particularly refer to a few of our leaders, the stalwarts that the state has produced, all these illustrious sons of the soil whom we miss as the people of this beautiful state, along with their own loved ones, the bereaved members of their respective families. I would like to particularly first remember our let Albinstone M. Sangma, who was elected in 1978 and in 83, and also served as leader of our own tribe, the Garo tribe, in different capacities. He was one of our uncles of the clan, Manda clan, and he has been instrumental in 
giving us, uh, you know, the sense of realizing the power of coming together collectively as clan. And was a pioneer in inspiring everyone, not just Manda clan, but the uh, other clans of our Garo community in realizing <coughs> the strength of this clan system, the overall customary practice and customary laws which bind us together and how this can be optimally leveraged upon in bringing our people together for optimal realization of the potentialities that we collectively demonstrate. I had a very personal relationship with him, being the clan uncle, like many other members of Manda clan and other co-clans, like we have Manda, Mangsang, Mankan, and different clans which were an offshoot from the mother Manda clan. And he has been a guide. Uh, he has been a, he has been steadfast in his guidance and in sharing his wealth of experiences in all matters, whether it is in the matter of leading the community, leading the clan, or in the matter of our various pools and pulses pertaining to our public life. He has contributed immensely along with the people of the state, the Manda clan remain deeply gripped by his sad demise. And for me, he has been my uncle, like my father, and also a good friend. We are deeply saddened by his demise. And through you, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to convey our deepest condolences to the members of the very family of Let Albinstone and Samna. Also remember Balet uh, Jidrimbai, a man who was synonymous with simplicity and honesty and probity in public life. I have known him as a student when he first got elected in 1988, when we, with the delegations of the students from Regional Institute of Medical Sciences had an audience with him on the backdrop of certain problem that we had in the college in Manipur. And we were all impressed by his simplicity, his hospitality, and the kind of promptness with which he responded to our request. Because it has been always a difficult experience, experience then to even have an audience with many of the <coughs> ministers and other leaders in public life in the government then. So that was the first time. The first impression is the best impression, and that impression never changed in as far as Ba let Chedirmai is concerned. He remained steadfast in his way of life, in his commitment for the larger good of the people, larger good of the state, and has been a glue while he was in our party, but keeping all of us together. I remember in 1993, when the then Chief Minister Sri S. Mara was trying to convince some of his senior colleagues to be the speaker of the August House then. And uh, it was probably very difficult for the Chief Minister to convince from amongst all the leaders to occupy the speaker's post. And I could see how, with all humility, he was the one who accepted that offer and he uh, took, he left his birth in the cabinet <coughs> and agreed to be a speaker. And how he guided in course of his innings as speaker and while we were, you know, the uh, first timers in this August house. 
So lots of learning from this leader that we were so privileged that we were part of uh, this team where these illustrious leaders were uh, there and how they enriched us from multiple, multifaceted angle. I would like to convey my deepest condolences, join the leader of the house in conveying our deepest condolences to you, Mr. Speaker, sir, to all the loved ones of his family, the members of the very family, and all his relatives. Also remember, let Singh Muli, who was elected in 2003, a very committed leader from the eastern part of our state. I had the privilege of knowing him very closely. And I remember in 2003 and 1998, particularly in 1998, when all these leaders were able to unite the people from Jainte Hills and as a party leader, demonstrated their wherewithal in bringing the people together to ensure that they sweep the assembly election in 1998. I think we'll recollect the fact that in 1998, uh, all the seven seats in Giant Hills were won by the party, regional party. And Basinguli was one of the leaders who was instrumental in having that very rare milestone for the party. I have also known him even after he uh, was defeated. He was still active. In fact, there was a time when we had, had the privilege of looking at possibilities of how we could bring him to our team, the political party, and how he could have been an instrument in uh, connecting us with all the people who share the same dreams and who wanted to ensure that the leaders in public life are capable of demonstrating the qualities which people expect us to demonstrate, to lead and lead by example, and he was one of them who led by example and who have left a vacuum in the eastern part of the state with his demise. I convey my condolences to the family of the Berry families through you, Mr. Speaker, sir. We lost Baharji Lingdo, a very good friend, and a leader. Remember when he was first elected in 1998, we had a short scene of time when we were in the opposition. And how we all collectively responded to our call of duty as members in the opposition. I remember a time when there was a problem pertaining to migration and exodus of our people from Cassius region to Garovils from Shala area. And there was a, a kind of a very peculiar situation where there was a wrong perception being generated to create that uh, overall narrative where uh, people from the state, from the community perspective, we're not being able to have that whole sense of cohesion and sense of oneness. And that was a challenge that was thrown before us in 1998 with the exodus of quite a substantial number of our people from East Cassius to 
guards particularly to Ampati, the constituency which I represented. And therefore, we all came together, and one of our then elected representatives, the then members of this August House, was also Parji Lingdo. We had to uh, connect with the leaders from both sides and also the people who migrated towards Garowitz to create that sense of oneness. And I remember uh, that R.G. Lingdo, our friend and brother, who contributed to a great extent collectively along with many of our friends in bringing that sense of oneness. And we were able to bring all our friends who left Kalsils to come back and resettle in the same places from which they migrated. So that was something where we could uh, see how possible it is for all of us when we collectively try to unite our people of the state and leave no space for anybody to create that whole sense of uh, division. I also remember him as a very, I must say, one of the leaders who demonstrate the quality of a go-getter, <clears throat> who would ensure that things that is required to be done must be done. A man who had the courage to call spare to spare. And I think he has demonstrated that quality until his last breath. I used to talk to him, converse with him over phone. And whenever I speak to him while he was ailing, I could never feel that he was a patient. He could speak to me in such a way that he was OK, he was well, that there was no problem at all with him. So that is the kind of quality with which he, rather than making us sad, would like to feel us guilty of being uh, there to convey our concern about his health, because he would say that, OK, he is fine. He is going to recover. And that's the spirit with which he fought the disease which was trying to pull him down and, and who, which was coming on his way of uh, the on his way of demonstrating his own self of how Ballet Archilingo was. With the demise of these leaders, one thing I remember and which I would like to share in this August house is that all these leaders have been exceptional. They have been unique in their respective ways. <coughs> but one thing was common. The common was that they demonstrated their sincerity, the commitment to serve our people with utmost sense of honesty. They lived to the expectations of the people. They were the pride of the people, of the, not only of the respective constituencies, but of the people of the whole state. And one important thing is that they have left a legacy a legacy for which we will remember them, a legacy of commitment in the service of our beloved people and this beautiful state, and demonstrated their not just for self the sense of probity in public life, but also tried to influence others to inculcate this habit, to remain honest to their own responsibilities towards the larger good of the people and larger good of the state as a whole. We will remember them, we will cherish them for the legacy that they have left, the legacy of honesty and the true commitment in serving the people. And most importantly, the probity in public life, which is eluding us, eluding this generation. 
So I think their demise must once again provoke us to think as to how these people have left behind a legacy for which people will fondly cherish them and will speak good of them for the years and years, for the decades to come. And that is the kind of legacy I think that is what we would all like to leave. To be remembered for good things, to be remembered for honesty and commitment, and to ensure that our people can always take pride in saying that, yes, we were leaders of whom they can take pride. I also condole the demise of all those other leaders from different parts of the country. They have lived and served in different capacities. Through the years, and their services can never be quantified. Therefore, loss of each of these leaders have left a huge vacuum, which will be difficult to be filled in a short span of time. They have left a vacuum, and I'm sure the God will bless the people of their respective states to have leaders to take their place and lead the people in their respective states. With these few words, Mr. Speaker, sir, I once again, through you, convey my deepest condolences to the members of, to the respective members of all these leaders, the Biri families, and their loved ones, and the people who were closely associated with them. With these few words, Mr. Speaker, sir, I resume my seat.